Good afternoon. Dear listeners, welcome to AUGA Group Meeting with Investors. I'm Emilia from NASDAQ Vilnius, and I'm delighted to be the moderator for the today's event. We will start with a presentation from the management, which will be followed by the Q&A session. As always, I encourage every one of you to ask questions during or after the presentation in the question box of your screen. With that said, I'm pleased to introduce today's presenters, uh, CEO of AUGA Group, Kestutis Yuschus, and CFO of AUGA Group, Mindugas Ambrasas. Dear guests, please, the floor is yours and good luck. Okay, so <clears throat> good afternoon, everyone. As always, uh, thank you for, for joining this uh, seminar and uh, being interested in AUGA Group activities. Um, I will go through the presentation and as uh, we expect a lot of questions about our results, about uh, our future plans. Today, I'm also joined by our CEO, Kestutis. Uh, so we will uh, answer uh, those questions together later on. Um, starting with the presentation, uh, as uh, our reports uh, are already published, uh, I believe I will not uh, surprise anyone uh, by saying that you know, we had uh, quite a poor uh, results. Uh, and uh, these results uh, were mainly uh, affected by challenges in our crop growing segment, uh, which still is uh, the largest segment in the AUGA group activities. And unfortunately, this segment is uh, still uh, dependable on, on weather conditions. From time to time, uh, we have uh, specific weather conditions which lead uh, to poor harvest and, and poor financial results. So according to some my preliminary calculations, I would say that uh, today, this year, uh, due to extreme heat, uh, we generally had the uh, uh, second uh, worst harvest in, in AUGA group history. And unfortunately, uh, in this situation, uh, other segments uh, maybe didn't uh, step up uh, somehow at least to compensate uh, poor results in crop growing and to improve over, overall results of the group. But as always, um, uh, uh, let's go and uh, discuss uh, every single se se segment. And uh, I will try to uh, uh, tell in more details you know, what had happened, uh, why this happened, and what we are doing to change uh, current uh, situation and current results. So as always, we are starting with our largest uh, segment, uh, crop growing. And uh, as every year, nine months uh, results uh, are this time of the year when we can really uh, review uh, our uh, harvest uh, for the this season. So uh, this year we already have big part of uh, our cultures uh, fully harvested. Uh, there are some uh, similar, uh, some small part uh, remaining uh, for the fourth quarter. But overall, we see uh, uh, main results and main trends, uh, and, and we can uh, discuss in detail the results uh, of the harvest for the season. So talking about harvest, I would say there are three. Uh, key ingredients uh, to, to check uh, what uh, is result uh, for the year. So what uh, were the yields, uh, what are the costs, and what are the prices of, of, of the commodities we have grown? So let's start uh, with the yields. And as I said in the very beginning, uh, yields uh, or decrease of the yields, and as you can see from, uh, from the name of the slide, that in average we have 24% uh, lower uh, yields this year comparing to last uh, years. So yields, um, uh, changes in yields was really quite uh, substantial and uh, they uh, heavily affected our uh, financial results for, for three quarters. So what had happened? Uh, I hope that everyone uh, who is from Lithuania or from uh, our region uh, remembers uh, what a nice uh, uh, summer uh, we had. Uh, now, when looking from a historical perspective, uh, I just can say that according to official statistic, uh, July, this year's July was the hottest uh, July in the last 16 years in Lithuania. Uh, June, uh, 16 years, sorry. Uh, June at the same time was the second uh, hottest uh, month in the last uh, 60 years in Lithuania. So when we combine those two things, Generally, we had extremely uh, hot uh, summer, and uh, this heat uh, had unfortunately very uh, uh, bad effect uh, on, on our harvest. Because what happened, uh, 
cultures uh, generally stop uh, growing uh, when the temperature is above 25 percent and at the same time this um, uh, thing uh, called dew which which you can find uh, in early mornings was not present so generally all the crops had the situation uh, which uh, really limited uh, the growth at the, those months and there is the largest uh, growth uh, uh, during the year uh, uh, this affected uh, not all the crops uh, as you can see from the statistics but in, even looking at our results uh, legumes and uh, other summer uh, cultures were especially affected uh, at the same time winter crops and effects on winter crops uh, was not uh, that uh, significant um, I would say that uh, similar decrease in uh, yields uh, we can see uh, not only in alga groups activities but overall in agriculture in Lithuania and in this region unfortunately there is uh, one specific thing uh, which uh, led uh, that this uh, extreme heat uh, affected organic farming uh, and alga group uh, results uh, more uh, and this is really related to some of the specifics in organic farming because uh, uh, from uh, uh, you know organic farming uh, requires uh, change of crops and uh, requires different crop structure in order to to, to produce uh, normal yields so comparing to conventional farming we have to seed and grow much more uh, legumes much more summer cultures and that were exactly the same cultures which uh, uh, had the worst uh, yields uh, due to the specific uh, uh, weather conditions. Uh, on the positive note, uh, if you remember about our last year's uh, results, uh, we had uh, uh, some uh, changes which led uh, to reduced quality of our main uh, uh, main culture, wheat. So it was like the first year when we had a uh, bigger proportion of uh, feed quality wheat and which led uh, to lower price and lower results last year so as discussed uh, previously you know we thought that this, this one is one time uh, situation and uh, this year really proved that we got back uh, on track and currently the quality uh, is, is really better comparing to last year uh, food quality wheat uh, accounts for around 60 percent of to total harvest Unfortunately, those positive things really didn't uh, uh, didn't uh, you know had that uh, big uh, uh, impact on overall results as uh, decrease uh, of the yields uh, had. Uh, to, to also to, to try to say you know what is our you our view uh, how we can uh, mitigate this risk uh, going forward because as I said uh, and if you look at our historical results. Uh, we have poor harvest this year. Uh, we had very similar situation uh, five years ago. Uh, so generally, what is our plan uh, to, to, to mitigate the risk or maybe even to, to avoid the risk? Uh, so in a longer perspective, uh, our plan, uh, and uh, we are currently working on some technologies uh, and, and technical things, uh, how we can substitute uh, legumes uh, with um, leguminous grasses which are not that sensitive to, to hot uh, temperature. Because the whole idea behind that is that legumes, which are used uh, as a feed, is just a source of protein. So generally, if we can find a way how to use leguminous grasses on the same purpose, which, uh, as I said, uh, have, uh, you know, are less affected by these uh, weather conditions, so generally we could control uh, this process and somehow at least uh, partially minimize uh, the risk. But that's uh, the process and technologies we are still working uh, on, and, and, and hopefully, you know, we will be successful in that. Going to the another segment, uh, costs. Uh, overall, I would say uh, uh, that we uh, were able to control our cost uh, level, even in quite difficult environment. You all know about uh, inflation uh, we have in Lithuania and in, in, in other European countries. So generally, if we look uh, at the statistics of our two uh, largest uh, cultures, so you can see that, uh, for example, for the wheat, costs uh, even decreased uh, quite substantially. But if we look at the uh, numbers for all the harvest, so for fully harvested crop, uh, as, as for today, we have an increase 
uh, 3% uh, comparing uh, to the result of the last years, which I would say is, is, is really good result. But uh, uh, if we take into account what are our plans and what are forecasted figures for the cultures which we need to, to finalize, so generally we even believe that the results, result can be even improved and at the end of the year, we generally will be on very similar level of costs uh, what we uh, had uh, last year. And if to be a little bit more specific about uh, 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 different costs, so I think it's not a big uh, uh, secret that you know, we had the biggest pressure coming from increasing uh, diesel or the, of diesel prices, labor and uh, land rent costs. Uh, and we were able to mitigate uh, this increase by increasing our efficiency, you know, how we are organizing uh, our activities and work in, in the farms. And so also um, uh, by decrease uh, for fertilizers uh, due to crop rotation. And the third part, uh, prices. Uh, so uh, I think uh, just to start, uh, we always showing this graph about statistic uh, of uh, prices of organic and conventional uh, wheat uh, in Germany. Um, this is not uh, very specific prices which uh, our group is selling, but I think it really shows the trends, uh, how the market is, is, is uh, going. Because first of all, Germany is uh, like the largest consumer of organic goods, and it's also the largest uh, market for, for our group. So I think it really gives uh, understanding where the market is, is growing. So I also don't think that, you know, uh, I will uh, surprise everyone by saying that the uh, trend uh, in pricing is, is really very positive for growers uh, of uh, agricultural uh, commodities. So uh, if we look at the graph and statistics here is uh, till the end of uh, September. Uh, so generally you can see that uh, if we compare prices year to year, so conventional wheat price uh, had risen by 30%. Organic, which is somehow a little lacking uh, behind the, the growth, was lower. Uh, it grew by 8%. At the same time, uh, our average uh, sales price uh, increased by 60%. Of course, it was not uh, uh, affected by price only. Um, as mentioned before, uh, we had uh, improved quality. So this also uh, resulted in, in improved uh, average uh, price, but overall, uh, there is a uh, clear tendency, positive trend in tendency of growing prices, and it's not only about the wheat, it's generally about all the cul uh, cultures we, we are growing. And I think even more importantly, though we don't have statistics uh, here, the trend really continues, uh, and I would say even on the larger scale uh, in the uh, months after September, uh, October, November. So as just a fact, uh, in November, uh, we had a record price for conventional, but wheat, uh, it reached uh, 311 and 50 cents uh, euros per ton, which uh, I would say is record uh, price, at least for the last 10 years. And similar trends uh, are also happening with, uh, uh, with organic uh, products as well. But here we are coming to the second uh, problem we faced uh, this year, that unfortunately, though the price uh, tendencies are very positive, uh, Auga Group uh, was not able to feel fully utilize this uh, opportunity, I would say. Uh, what happened? Um, because uh, uh, in organic uh, production, we are quite a big player and uh, we don't have possibility and we would face uh, risks uh, if we would not plan our sales uh, through the year. So we just can't sell everything we grow at, in one month's time uh, to one buyer, etc. So generally our sales process goes for another year from the harvest. And historically, to mitigate this risk, uh, we always started uh, to contract uh, uh, like 30, 40% of our forecasted harvest before the harvest. So by the end of the second quarter, that was the target to have uh, one third of our forecasted uh, uh, harvest to, to, to be contracted. So what happened when our harvest uh, became you know, much, much lower, for some cultures where we have this uh, largest uh, decrease in yields, uh, uh, for example, beans, you know, then, then we have a drop uh, of yields by almost uh, more than 60%, which leads to a situation if in the very beginning we planned to contract 20% of our harvest, so generally we have 100% of uh, the harvest already contracted. And if you look at the same price uh, graph, 
So generally, the contracts we did in the second quarter, uh, you know, the price level is, is, is much lower to the price level we are currently having in the market. So generally, we have a situation that for at least some of the uh, cultures, which has the largest uh, decrease in yields, and at the same time, maybe has the largest improvement in, in prices, we really can't uh, benefit uh, in, in financial results because we really need to follow the contracts we, we did uh, with our buyers uh, in the first half of the year. And uh, as for today, uh, we have 83% uh, of uh, this year's harvest uh, contracted. So generally, yes, uh, there is uh, a possible uh, imp uh, positive impact uh, in the future in, in the fourth quarter and maybe in the beginning of next, next year from selling uh, uh, cultures which are still not contract, contracted. So this will be a positive impact on financial results. But uh, once again, looking at overall figures, uh, it will be not uh, that substantial to uh, essentially change uh, result uh, of Auger Group uh, for, for the financial uh, year. Uh, from another positive uh, trend, uh, um, you know, this is also uh, one of the uh, things which really helps us to look into the future in a more positive way and uh, to manage our expectations for the next uh, year's uh, results. Because, uh, as I said, uh, this trend of growing prices continues and there are different uh, you know, arguments why uh, we expect uh, that uh, this trend uh, will not change and there will be no decrease on of the prices we are currently having you know the same poor harvest not only in Lithuania but in the, in the region so generally the situation is is really that uh, this price uh, level should, should uh, be at least current level or can even improve uh, in in the future uh, but uh, more importantly uh, i think it's the first uh, time in our history uh, when we are already, uh, you know, being contract, uh, contacted uh, by different buyers, which uh, really wants to make uh, contracts for next uh, year's harvest already and fix the prices, uh, you know, they, we are having or market is having at the moment. So generally, even right now, we have some discussions and some offers uh, to contract next year's harvest. Uh, with the price, which is, as you can see from, from the slide, from for different cultures, from 2% to 65% higher than we sold uh, uh, this year. For the major uh, cultures, uh, wheat, uh, beans, so this means around 30% 30, 30 uh, increase uh, from the price level uh, we sold uh, those uh, cultures uh, this year. And, and when you look into this, so this is one of the reasons we could uh, expect uh, next uh, year's result uh, to be better uh, because of uh, this increasing uh, price level and not only market price level but there is a possibility to contract that but uh, as i said we believe that this will trend to continue so at the moment we think that it's still better not to to make those contracts right now but uh, to wait uh, even uh, even further so going to financial results, uh, I, I would say there is not uh, so much to, to add here. So generally we had uh, this very substantial decrease uh, uh, in, in yields, uh, which led uh, to substantial decrease in uh, uh, this uh, loss of revaluation of biological assets. So as you can see, and compared to last year results, generally we have almost 10 million difference uh, from the result we had last year, 6.5 million to, to result uh, we are having this year 3.3 million euros. So the same 10 million difference is really at the gross uh, profit uh, line as, as well. Um, just another comment uh, that uh, uh, though sales uh, in crop growing not, does not correlate with our profitability because profitability is calculated in this uh, revaluation, uh, but uh, decrease of sales, which is affected by smaller proportion of previous year's harvest sold in this financial year and of course uh, lower uh, harvest this year so generally this uh, leads to, to lower overall sales of top growing segment and overall sales of auger group uh, which just looking at the figures you know once again uh, uh, leads to, to, to some conclusion 
Uh, the second uh, segment, uh, dairy, uh, I maybe just, if, if there are listeners from our previous uh, presentations, I think we remember that we already talked about some challenges uh, we had in production in the beginning of the year, which led uh, to not improving our yields, milking yields, and also increase of uh, cost. Uh, so yeah, we were working uh, quite hard to, 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 to improve the situation. And I would say that uh, we managed uh, to solve those production uh, issues. And as you can see from the graph on top, uh, yields in the third quarter, they already improved and they are higher comparing to the yields uh, we had uh, in 2020. Uh, overall, uh, yields uh, improved by 3%, which, uh, yes, maybe slower uh, growth uh, what we had in previous years, but of course, uh, with additional growth, it's, it's, it becomes more and more difficult to, to improve the yields. But still, uh, the trend, uh, the first thing I think it's important that we managed to change this bad trend in the beginning of the year, and the third qu quarter already showed uh, good uh, developments in terms of improving uh, yields. Um, so overall, which this led uh, to increased uh, production, maybe not substantially, but uh, the group produced uh, almost 21,000 tons of milk in, in 2021. And uh, this, I would say, uh, improved uh, uh, way of working and solved production issues. You know, there is, uh, I hope that this, this trend uh, and, and growth of the result will continue. Uh, from the sales side, um, there is really not uh, much uh, to tell because I would say that from sales side, the segment is, is very stable and stable uh, means good because we have uh, quite stable growth, uh, maybe not substantial, but uh, growth uh, in prices, uh, growth uh, in, uh, you know, we, as we managed to sell all our milk of uh, as organic one, one and a half year ago. So generally we have the situation stable and all our milk is, is, is sold as organic. Average price uh, grows a little bit. Uh, maybe this growth accelerated in uh, recent months. So for example, in October, we uh, had almost 2% growth in, in milk price uh, compared to September. So it's also correlates to the changes we are having in the conventional milk, milk market. Uh, and, and that's uh, generally what are the tendencies in, in uh, dairy business. Uh, I think we managed to change and improve our productivity. And at the same time, we have a stably good situation with uh, prices. And uh, this uh, led uh, to, to, to financial results. Uh, uh, I would say, yes, it's a small improvement comparing to, to the last year. But... Uh, if uh, you would check uh, our results for the first and second quarter, so there is a big improvement in the results of the quad, uh, third quarter because in the six month results, uh, we generally had a negative difference uh, comparing to, to the last year. And uh, during the third quarter, we managed not only to improve results per quarter, but also to improve nine month results comparing to, to the last year. Overall, just to comment, uh, though we had uh, a little larger production, uh, sold amounts of milk, they decreased uh, a little bit by 1%, but this is mainly the, the related to increased uh, usage of the milk in our own farms, because you know we are using for, for heifers, and that's part of the program, how we want to improve uh, and increase uh, our herd. Uh, secondly, as I said, the price is, is growing stably, so it was like 4% uh, growth uh, during nine months of uh, this year. And uh, this project I already mentioned that uh, we, I think for the last uh, year, maybe we talk that you know, we really want to increase uh, our herd uh, in order this uh, segment to be more efficient. Uh, so as you can see from the figures, uh, we are doing this. Unfortunately, uh, this uh, we didn't reach our targets to have uh, 3.6 thousand cows by by this quarter, and it seems we will not uh, reach this target by the end of the year uh, for several reasons. Main being that uh, generally there is a shortage of, of good quality havers uh, in the market, but overall number of cows. Hafers and bulls, which are like potential cows in the future, is is, is growing, and uh, this is the trend uh, we will will continue in in the future.
Uh, mushroom segments, um, as, as I mentioned in the very beginning of my presentation, uh, uh, that uh, unfortunately uh, other segments uh, didn't uh, help to improve overall result of the group. So generally this was about uh, our mushroom segment, uh, which also had not, uh, I would say, good uh, results uh, in the third quarter. Um, what, uh, what had happened? Uh, uh, the biggest problem we had uh, is in production. And as you can see from the graph, uh, overall production uh, output in the third uh, quarter of 2021 uh, decreased uh, quite substantially. If historically we were producing and selling around or a little bit more than 1,000 uh, tons of mushroom uh, per month. So in those uh, three uh, months, uh, you know, we managed to, to, to produce and sell you know, between eight and 900 uh, tons of mushrooms only. And uh, what were the reasons uh, of, of this decrease in production? Uh, so there are several, uh, several reasons uh, which are not related, but you know, when they happened at the same uh, point of time, so maybe that's why they also had a uh, worse uh, effect on results, uh, if you could expect you know, from one, one effect only. So, uh, the same high temperature I also mentioned when we were talking about uh, crop growing activities. It also has uh, had an effect on on uh, compost uh, production and quality of compost, which is used uh, for uh, growth of, of the mushroom. Because once again, when you have very high temperature, some of the gems, uh, you know, they just uh, die, and and you you will get lower yields. From the mushrooms, you, you from the compost you are using to grow the mushroom. Uh, secondly, uh, you know, uh, in, in the very beginning last year, I would say maybe we were a little bit more optimistic about our resilience uh, to COVID, and and we really hoped that uh, we will be able to manage those risks and avoid uh, financial maybe effects uh, from from the situation for our group. But it seems that the mushroom segment uh, is really affected. And it's for obvious reasons. This is a uh, labor intense uh, segment. You know, it employs uh, five, six hundred people and which work in closed uh, small, uh, you know, uh, farms. So, so there are lots of contact uh, between the workers. So generally we had several, uh, uh, I would say, uh, several months when we had the peak in, in, in uh, infected or quarantined workers, which led to a uh, shortage of, of employees. And unfortunately, when you have a shortage, uh, you know, we have a production which is not, uh, we, you can't stop. Generally, if the mushrooms are there, you need to, to, to collect them. And if you don't have people to do that, so generally you, you have uh, either to throw away the, the mushrooms, or if you collect uh, not on the right way, so you are uh, damaging uh, next wave harvest uh, and so on. Uh, and of course, there are some other reasons, but uh, I would say these two were the main uh, ones uh, which led to poor, to low production output, which led to poor uh, financial result. Uh, and why it is so? Because in, in our mushroom uh, segment, I would say majority of costs uh, are, are really fixed. Because uh, you know maybe we have uh, uh, different costs which are related to, to, to collection of, of, of mushrooms, but still you need to, to, to pay for those employers. So generally, if we are producing and planning to produce the same amount of mushrooms and our harvest is, is lower, we generally have the same level of costs, which uh, obviously leads to, uh, to, to worse uh, financial results. And the second uh, issue with, with the segment is that it's not the business where you can spot the problem and change the problem uh, very quickly. Because overall cycle of production, it takes uh, six, seven weeks. So generally, if you see that there is something uh, you know, wrong with the compost, for example, you make some changes, you can see it if this change works or not after seven, six weeks uh, only. So generally, you know, there is no quick uh, fixing uh, of the production uh, issues uh, in, in, in this business. Uh, latest results show that we managed to 
solve, I would say, majority of, of the production problems we, we had. You know, one is obvious, there is no heat in, in, in Lithuania anymore, so this was easy to do, but there were some other problems. But overall, we expect uh, that our production uh, volumes will go to, let's say, normal uh, level, thousand and above uh, in, in this quarter. And this is also good news because usually December is really the high season for us. Uh, and uh, in, in some years, it was very substantial uh, if we talk about financial results for the year. So, you know, we believe that we will be fully ready in production uh, if, uh, if uh, then December will come. Uh, just, uh, you know, showing you financial results of, of the segment. So, as I said, uh, due to decrease in production, we generally have very similar level of costs, but the revenues are lower, which leads uh, to, to lower gross profit for the segment. Um, talking about the future, uh, I already mentioned that, you know, we believe that we will be able to get to the normal production levels uh, in uh, mushroom business. Uh, but if we talk, for example, about compost uh, sales, so uh, this decrease we, we had uh, because of the COVID uh, and the situation in our export markets, generally we don't expect that this situation will change in the nearest future. So the main focus is really on, on the mushroom uh, segment and mushroom business directly. So uh, going back to normal production, uh, new markets is the main uh, reason why uh, why why uh, there is a belief of improvement uh, or going back to normal results uh, for, for the segment. Fast moving consumer goods. Um, this is maybe a little bit different story. I think uh, we had very good uh, quarter uh, for the segment. Uh, it's generally, I think, uh, a record uh, quarter, at least for this year, but uh, Third quarter, it was 66% uh, growth comparing to the third quarter of 2020. And uh, even for the year, we have 45% uh, growth in terms of uh, sales. Um, I would say even more important thing that uh, despite all this uh, cost uh, pressure we are having, mainly logistic cost in, in FM, FMCG uh, business, we still are able to uh, maintain and even improve a little bit our profitability. So for, for the third quarter, we had 30% uh, uh, profitability. So this is, I think, the, the most important if we talk about the results of uh, FMCG uh, segment uh, in general. So as you can see, uh, gross profit improvement is really substantial. Uh, so uh, increase from uh, almost uh, 300,000 uh, 300, euros to 1.5 million. Uh, of course, there are some, some differences because uh, now we have uh, Gribo LT, the main company uh, in the segment, uh, fully consolidated, and it has part of the effect of the growth, but still, uh, overall segment is, is really showing good uh, uh, growth and should uh, good uh, financial uh, results uh, for, for this year. And maybe also to elaborate a little bit about uh, the challenges we are facing, because we already talked about this uh, during our presentation of half-year uh, results, uh, this uh, overall situation uh, with uh, logistics, uh, transportation, it has uh, an effect on on, uh, on the segment as well. So we now see quite a big uh, fluctuation of uh, sales uh, every quarter based on the orders we are having. Because uh, what our customers, how they change their behavior, they generally reduced the quantity of orders but increased uh, the average value. So as you can see, even from the results this year, we had quite low growth in the second quarter and we had very good uh, growth in the third quarter. And generally, yeah, we have to say that this growth partly came from, from orders moving, moved, being moved from the second quarter to, to the third quarter. But still, overall, it's, uh, as I mentioned, 45% growth year on year. So I would say this is uh, one of the segments we, we are really happy about. So uh, going further, uh, just uh, maybe graphical illustration uh, where like the changes in our BDA uh, came from. Uh, so I think uh, it's it's obvious. Then we had this significant decrease in in our crop growing uh, result. So this was uh, the key 
or I would say the obvious one obvious reason why the overall results of the group has changed because if you can see from the graph of generally other segments uh, are doing on a similar level. Yes, maybe this decrease in, in mushroom segment was partly compensated by FMCG, but this uh, huge decrease in result of crop growing, it really affected the overall result uh, of, uh, of the group. Um, at the same time, um, uh, also uh, this uh, maybe decrease of, of, of uh, uh, the results investments we did uh, this year, we also resulted uh, in the increase uh, of our net uh, debt uh, to almost 65, 66 million euros for the end of the September. But uh, here I also maybe have to say that uh, uh, this year, after uh, all this refinancing or restructuring uh, uh, of, of our credit facilities, uh, we have um, like maximum leverage in the third quarter. So we expect uh, our, our leverage uh, at least slightly to go down because the trading lines uh, we have for our crop growing and crop trading uh, business, generally they are decreasing with the sales of, of the inventories we are having. So that's why we believe that the uh, net, net debt we have for the third quarter will, will decrease. And this is uh, maybe some somehow different situation from what we had previous years, when usually at the end of the year, there was an increase in, in, in debt uh, just because you know, we managed to do refinancing at the end of the year last year. We did the bond issues at the end of the year, year before, and, and this really resulted in different change of leverage uh, for the year. So um, I think uh, if we talk uh, about our results, um, there is one maybe positive, let's say, news uh, uh, from, from the results uh, uh, we showed to you and, and discussed. I think uh, these results uh, is just yet another proof uh, that uh, climate change is a real thing. And we really need to do something about that because we see that uh, this uh, changes of temperature or extremes in, in temperature, they are more and more common. And obviously we will have more and more effect uh, on our agricultural business and uh, to be specific, you know, our group result. So for us, uh, it's even yet another proof uh, that, you know, we are uh, right on, on, on our strategy, what we want to do on, and what we want to change uh, in, in our activities. So generally, uh, I think this is just uh, yet another proof that we really need focus even more on, on the development uh, projects we are currently doing and find the people, time and resources, not only to do R&D projects, but also start uh, their commercialization. Uh, of course, uh, and yeah, just, just to add to that, I think it's not only, you know, we are talking about this. Uh, those who, who you know, read uh, or heard about uh, this UN climate uh, change conference, uh, which happened recently, I think that's also was one of the key topics, uh, agriculture, effect of uh, agriculture on CO2 emissions and, and uh, global warming. So, you know, that's our main target, what we want to do and achieve. And as I said, uh, we really have to look at possibilities how to, to do it uh, uh, and, and not, uh, not stop. So, of course, uh, uh, in our current situation, uh, you know, we have to understand that historically, all those developments were done uh, from our own uh, funds mainly, or okay, uh, so partly financed uh, by, by the banks or bonds. Uh, but uh, the current financial results, uh, of course, we are in the situation uh, that uh, our possibilities to, to do those projects are, I would say, limited. So generally what we are doing now and what is uh, like the key uh, uh, priority is really uh, considering uh, all the options to find uh, additional funding uh, for the company in order to have uh, possibility to speed up as possible uh, our development projects and also commercialization of our project because uh, you already know that you know we we worked for those projects uh, for a couple of years some of them are already finalized and presented uh, to, to to everyone Others are in development uh, or testing stages, 
So generally, we really in the situation that you know, if we want to succeed, we really need to speed up those processes as as much as possible. And as I said, right now uh, all the options are under consideration, and we have different discussions. Uh, right now, uh, we are not uh, able and ready to to, to give uh, more details, uh, but uh, as as uh, fast as as quickly, we will have. Uh, agreements, decisions, uh, how we are moving forward in place. Of course, we will share this information with, with our investors and, and everyone. Um, second uh, important factor, of course, uh, taking into account uh, our existing uh, or current uh, results, of course, uh, we need uh, to, to, and of course we have like discussion and questions from our uh, key financing partners, uh, banks, uh, because uh, yes, with uh, such a decrease uh, of our results, and then uh, we have a breach of, of several uh, financial covenants. So here I can say that uh, we have very productive uh, discussions with our um, uh, main uh, financing partners. Uh, you know, uh, we I believe we have uh, one uh, uh, one uh, approval, uh, let's say, of, of, of changes already, and, and we expect that we will have uh, another in the upcoming one two weeks. So generally, uh, I would say we are not expecting it, uh, at this point of time any changes in in banks' behavior and then additional uh, obstacles uh, to to continue with the projects what we are doing and. I think here we can really say that uh, I believe that uh, things we uh, went through in the previous uh, years because uh, you know uh, our group had better years, we had uh, worse years. So generally, maybe we learned some lessons from uh, from from that. But also our partners, we also understand uh, and and uh, understand our business a little bit better, and this uh, helps them to to make uh, decisions. Uh, to help us and, and, and support us. But I think the most important thing uh, is that uh, currently we, we, we are working with, uh, with several different alternatives. And as I said, uh, then we will be ready to, to, to make uh, some announcements and to give some results of those discussions we are having. Of course, uh, we, will, we will do that. And just as a reminder, uh, these are like uh, key ideas, uh, what we are trying to do and try to implement. So there are three key areas where our main focus is uh, is now. So uh, biogas cycle and uh, rehearsals is specialized feed technology and crop rotation. So we had a substantial increase in investment uh, this year. And of course, if we will, uh, will solve uh, this funding uh, question, so this is really the way to go because if we want to be successful, we really need not only to develop uh, those uh, those technologies, but also start uh, to commercialize them as well. And just uh, one of the examples, uh, I believe a big part of you already saw and heard about this. So, you know, Auga and One, uh, our first uh, hybrid uh, biomethane electric tractor, which uh, we introduced in September with, uh, this year. So, you know, uh, we can say that. Uh, it was really uh, interesting uh, thing, not you know uh, locally, but uh, we had quite big interest uh, from all over the world. You know, we, are, we had the publications about uh, this tractor, as you can see, 140 publications in 25 different countries. So, for example, Forbes was one of the the, the uh, publications which which uh, went in quite details uh, what what we're doing here. So, uh, as mentioned previously, we still have this uh, aim that uh, we'll start uh, using tractors in our daily activities uh, in at least uh, third quarter, third quarter uh, next year. And uh, just recently, uh, we signed a contract manufacturing agreement with Rokishka Mashinuga Miklas, with Lithuanian company. So as soon as we are ready with the production, you know, after certification, securing funding. So we will have uh, resources to to to, to produce uh, tractors uh, for our own use uh, usage uh, at least for the beginning. And the last uh, information, as always, uh, so just uh, uh, financial information about our share performance, uh, our annual turnover, and and uh, our bond turnover, which remains quite active. 
but where we have few uh, significant events I would like to mention. So uh, first of all, in uh, September uh, this year, uh, our main shareholder of, uh, of Auga Group, Baltic Champs Group, they increased uh, the ownership. Uh, they bought shares for almost 750,000 euros, increasing ownership uh, uh, from 55 to 55.7 <coughs> per percent. Uh, and the second, so I think this also, you know, proves uh, the point that the main shareholder is, uh, trusts uh, the company and uh, uh, the strategy we are, we are implementing. And secondly, what is also in the process, uh, we are delisting uh, our shares uh, from uh, Warsaw Stock Exchange. So we will have to finalize the process uh, in upcoming days. And, and of course, we will inform about the final results. Uh, as I think it was explained in uh, in press releases, uh, this uh, was done mainly from efficiency point of view. Generally, there was very small amount of shares uh, traded in the Warsaw. So generally, we just had additional administrative uh, tasks and costs, but no benefits. Uh, and we believe that focusing on on one market, uh, you know, will 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 benefit everyone. So that was the main uh, main logic uh, behind this move. And maybe for those who are not familiar, yeah, so there are slightly different rules in uh, Polish stock exchange. So instead of a company buying its own shares, uh, we have uh, the same largest shareholder uh, doing this delisting. So generally, Baltic Cham groups, uh, Baltic Champs group, our the largest shareholder, will increase uh, the ownership even further by the shares which will be uh, delisted from 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 the wash. And as always, here is uh, links with uh, information. Um, and uh, now maybe I'll just give a short word to Kestutis and we will be ready to, to answer your question. Okay, thank you very much, Mendo. It was a great presentation. And uh, I don't need, not need to add uh, at all about, uh, because you it was very clear what the activities are. So uh, maybe I wanted to say in short uh, that numbers and the profits, we are not this year. We don't have uh, profits, but uh, the, our capacities and production to, uh, production units, we are not decreased. We have the same capacities we had half a year before. We have the same customer, better customer day. Every day we enlarge our uh, customer base, uh, not only here uh, uh, locally in Baltic states, but we also exp expanding our international markets in all the segments. And, um, you know, even uh, we don't reach our goals because uh, because this was uh, due uh, due to external factors, uh, heat waves here in Lithuania or this COVID impact on mushroom business. But I uh, can't blame too much my managers of uh, segments managers because we are we are really work hard uh, to keep to increase efficiency daily operations and to control the costs. And uh, this is actually we succeeded this uh, with this part of the job. And. Uh, when we say about uh, does this was successful or not uh, nine months as results, I would say yes. And from the production side, this was uh, is not from the number size, but from the uh, where, where the value of the future auger is in the food uh, agriculture technology company. We succeeded uh, this year very much, and we we have uh, very good achievements. And not only in the biomethane tractor and machinery, which you've seen it already in presentations but also in other projects related with cows feeds uh, where we wanted to, to process the feeds in certain way that cows will substantial will reduce um, emissions. Uh, then we will be feeded by the special feed uh, designed by Auga companies technologies. And it's important to mention, which is actually our really specific uh, know-how which we are creating in the company and, uh, and even to, uh, with some technologies we could be even patented like for example, our Auga tractor is patented technology. Nobody does it before. And no one can uh, also copy paste uh, and just implement on the market. So um, I believe uh, that the targets we we, we set uh, for uh, for climate change uh, uh, till 2025 uh, to reduce emissions. We have published uh, uh, how much, uh, what percentages, and so on. We, it looks like we can improve this uh, data and we make it. Uh, we make it faster, and um, and uh, we would like to to change, but maybe a little bit later, our projections in the CO2 emissions uh, cuttings, and um, we success, successful uh, successful uh, 
implementation of technologies allows us to produce the food with no cost to nature or carbon neutrality way. And here we see that this is very big future for food and uh, for this kind of uh, food produced uh, uh, and uh, the value to the consumers. And uh, we believe that our FMCG segment, which is now based mainly on the ready meals uh, exports to international markets, we can uh, we can expand and we can uh, bring extra more uh, mobile products and larger products with main food baskets and uh, and uh, bring the value to the the technology change by producing a way that no that much less substantial emissions will create the value for our products produced and we believe that will be enough uh, much more uh, like enough to uh, market here, even in our Baltic states where we are quite active here, uh, to to expand our uh, positions on the on the retail seg segment. So uh, in general, uh, we are on track uh, regarding technology developing and uh, and uh, successful implementation of uh, carbon cutting technologies. Uh, but we have uh, been lagging behind with uh, numbers uh, uh, with this unsuccessful harvest. And, but uh, it's good to also optimism about that. Uh, Adjusted prices for organic uh, or organic produced, uh, which will will be produced for next year, we have very nice uh, fields and crops uh, in this autumn, and uh, everything done was on time. Uh, we have uh, very good soil conditions here, so and I think uh, next crop could be it will never it will not be it will be 60 years uh, bad disasters uh, from the historical, so it could be a very good crop. And much better prices we had uh, this year or last year. So um, uh, there is also questions which uh, we need to answer. So I, I will maybe finish with my speak speech and uh, please you open for the questions. Uh, so thank you very much for the uh, very comprehensive presentation and the final remarks. Uh, now we will proceed with the questions and indeed we have quite many of them. Uh, but before that, I would like to remind every one of you that you can submit your questions in the question box of your screen. Uh, so with that said, let's proceed. Uh, the first question is as following. What are main innovations you have implemented in 2021 and intentions for innovations in 2022? Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so uh, this year we already in the, um, published about our innovation about uh, uh, by meter driven tractor, which is uh, was designed and tested on our fields uh, this autumn, into far, and it takes uh, for us three years to develop this technology. And uh, this technology actually will be one to implement on commercial commercial scale already next year. And uh, secondly, we are working hard with uh, this technology, feed technology, which is already also in the testing production testing space, uh, and we probably would like to. Imp to, to present the technology next year, uh, uh, which is also was published about our intentions to do. So this is the main two achievements we've done. And there are many projects uh, uh, like Biometan Cycle about this purification technologies and so on, which also will start up uh, implementation space next year. And here we will, uh, we will start produce uh, methane uh, with partners uh, here in Lithuania, uh, from our waste, uh, from our manure, from our straw and, uh, and residues of the farming or, uh, residues, and uh, the total production of this methane could reach uh, uh, up to seven million uh, liters uh, diesel and equivalent, which is actually more like Auga use it now for for our farming operations. So next year is really uh, here about implementation already created technologies uh, which we've done in 2021 and uh, years before. Thank you very much. And um, do you have any plans to broaden a FMCG segment product basket or enter new markets with FMCG products in 2022? Thank you. So about the FMCG segment, like I said before, so we constantly, of course, uh, uh, opening new markets uh, because the sales of FMCG segment, you've seen yourself, that is grows 40, above 40%. 40 but uh, where our concentration is not uh, looking outside uh, outside of our region, we would like to implement new products, of course, on the market. But it will be also uh, will come together with uh, with, uh, with implementation of new technologies, much better for carbon neutrality technologies on our farms. So 
it not will be separate it will be coming together so but as we expect also implement technologies and also a broaden broaden up uh, uh, fmcg's uh, product basket uh, next uh, next year uh, second part of next year probably thank you very much for your comment uh, what role will play biomethane in the transition to zero emissions could you please uh, comment on that too uh biomethane uh, actually 30 uh, percent of our co2 emissions from uh, farming operations related to with uh, with diesel and another fossil fuels usage on the farms so already next year we have capacities to to produce the same amount even more amount uh, from uh, from uh, alternative uh, from uh, from a uh, second generation biofuels made made of augus uh, agriculture's residues so um we don't say that we already will implement next year in fully transition, but our aim next year already start uh, implement technology on the fields and run on real solutions. Uh, real solutions will uh, will be uh, for cutting this uh, this uh, uh, fossils related emissions down. So 2023 probably will be first years when we. We, we can uh, do carbon neutrality regarding uh, regarding fossils on the farms and it's much more early like we have in our co2 cutting plants so successful implementation of our d plants thanks very much also for green bond issuing uh, who, who actually participated in this green bonds uh, two years before yeah and uh, part of this money is where we actually come for this r&d departments and these uh, biometan tractors were never been developed if this very green bonds will be not uh, implemented uh, now in build in investors we are not uh, bought uh, so this is a, we are really on track uh, regarding our uh, uh, sustainability plans and um, and it's also related with uh, also technology on the farms thank you very much uh, another question that we received is as following what is the potential market size and uh, the total available market for auga group uh, m1 tractor when do you think you start selling auga m1 tractor uh, could it be in 2023 or 24 thank you okay so uh, regarding the tractor uh, it's not 2024 next year we want to start already operate with uh, a group of machinery on our fields to finally test before massive production we have already a partner partner who will make this contract manufacturing for our company and make assembling lines uh, and all the kind of things related to the production side so we don't need to to invest ourselves in production premises and so on and uh, but the capacity of this facility is huge and uh, we can dedicate above 10,000 square meters only for assembling the purposes so this company is uh, and we are made a strategical uh, agreement uh, related with uh, to operation agreement uh, to produce the tractors by our request by our amount uh, which we can uh, bring uh, in next stages so um, and, uh, we don't say uh, about the selling the tractors uh, we wanted to publish later uh, then uh, the production will be closer to the finalization and then we can publish like separate uh, uh, public announcements thank you very much and uh, could you please comment on why such a substantial increase was made in other cash crop cultivated area, please? Um, this is just uh, uh, say specific uh, projects uh, we, we are doing because we, we also have specific uh, projects to grow some specific crops with our partners, uh, you know, for example, uh, Nordic Sugar, this is like our long-term uh, partner and, and we're doing growing uh, for them based on our long-term agreements. So this is uh, similar projects we, we are doing with other partners and that's currently the reason why there is an increase in other uh, cash crop uh, land area used for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for your answer. And uh, another question that we received is as following. Does the energy crisis substantially impact AUGA cost of sales and operating costs? Um, you know, obviously, if we talk about energy, uh, you know, crisis or in, uh, increase of energy, uh, and if we talk about 
including fossil fuels. Of course, fossil fuels is, fuels is one of the important and big factors in our cost structure. But uh, as you can see from our results uh, from crop growing, which is still the largest segment and has the largest impact on overall results, so we managed to, to, to compensate the growth uh, in, in, uh, from this cost area with uh, other improvements uh, in efficiency and, and so on. Uh, looking into longer perspective, you know, if we will be able to, to use our own uh, machinery, so of course this dependence will be even uh, lower. What I wanted to add on this, uh, so uh, our calculations, uh, so sustainable fuel nature of our waste uh, will be 30% cheaper to use it uh, if you compare uh, its fossils, existing prices, fossils uh, by uh, for the farm, uh, farming operation. So sometimes sustainability could even gain uh, extra profits. Uh, uh, but you know the technology was not here, so we are actually created technology which could be implemented, and the usage of cheaper fuels and more sustainable could be used uh, in the future. So, and then we don't need to care about the energy prices up and down because uh, our waste is our waste. The transformation of waste to energy it always will be more or less a fixed uh, fixed cost uh, to, to the company. So, another important thing regarding this. Uh, that sometimes uh, we, we make that, uh, well, let's say, we, when you're doing certain uh, contracting, uh, we do also some contracting, also future contracts. For example, uh, we fix in prices for energy. And if, uh, for example, for this year, we had quite good prices for this year, uh, energy prices fixed before, but as we, have, was not, we were uh, quite happy with what we had contracts for energy, but actually we, we, we contracted too cheap, probably, our crops uh, because you never know what markets will change. So sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. So this is why we have uh, less impact of energy crisis uh, on, on our cost. Thank you very much for your answer. And uh, as uh, we already spent an hour here, I would like to inform every one of you that we still have quite a few questions remaining. So please bear with us. Um, another question would be as following. Have any set targets for AUGA M1 production timeline changed? Thank you. I think we already discussed this, this question. So generally, there is a plan to, to, to start uh, producing and using uh, uh, tractors uh, next year. So generally, we just uh, already discussed this question. So we are not, uh, we not change our plans which we have we we've, we've done it in our presentation we say that we, next year we wanted to start a massive production it's not one not prototype but the, the production which could be used uh, for for anyone uh, consumer uh, in in the world so this is uh, what we want to do on the second part of the 2022 thank you very much um another question would be uh in Q3 2021, FMCG gross margin of 35.2% was much higher than the previous quarters. Is this a sustainable level going forward? Thank you. I think we would love uh, to, to have this uh, level of uh, profitability going forward, but I would say, you know, if uh, to judge about profitability level, we should look uh, on annual results uh, more because, as I mentioned during the presentation, we have quite big uh, fluctuation of orders, uh, production volumes, quarter to quarter, due to this uh, logis logistic uh, challenges uh, everyone is facing now. So this also has some effect, you know, how the costs are just uh, and divided. So this, uh, I would say, uh, looking at the profitability and forecasting profitability, of course, our plan was to have it a little bit lower and we should use annual profitability as a benchmark for, 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 for future targets. Also, I want to add to the numbers that uh, our production facility is actually producing most of these uh, products. Uh, it's highly automatized with so much robotics inside. And, uh, and uh, if we have uh, good numbers and good volumes, actually, which is fluctuating uh, quarter by quarter, uh, with good, uh, with big, uh, how to say, high, by high loading capacities, we can, uh, we can produce uh, uh, very good margins, and uh, if you have a lower volume as uh, production volume, so the fixed costs, uh, machinery depreciation, all this kind of thing stays like a fixed cost, and uh, this is why uh, the utilization, uh, our capacities, uh, 
increasing our utilization of our capacities, capitals will keep our profitability on, on good numbers uh, and uh, and fluctuation, like Mendo has just said, a quarter to quarter is also will be will be impacted. Uh, will be not uh, will uh, will be utilized in 100 percent. And we have many still space uh, to increase our capacity on this VBLT facility. Thank you very much. Uh, what would be the approximate FMCG net profit without Gribe LT consolidated? Gribe LT KB consolidated, please. Thank you. Impossible to answer the question because uh, Gribo LT uh, cooperative uh, company is really, you know, it, it is our FMCG business. Uh, so you know you can't uh, take uh, that from from the segment because this is the company which uh, produces uh, and which is also selling majority of, of the product to final consumers. Uh, the thing I mentioned in the presentation that previously that the company was not fully owned by us and was not consolidated into reports. So of course we had agreements and pricing agreements. Uh, you know what is the price of their production because Alga Group was uh, ordering production uh, services from from Gribelt. Uh, so there was like a deviation of of uh, result between the companies. Nowadays, you know, you can't divide that uh, just because uh, situation and volumes are completely different. So. No, it's, it's really impossible to do. Thank you for your comment. And could you please elaborate on much higher write-offs write -offs in uh, Q3 2021, please? Um, generally, you know, what happened, there are several uh, things uh, we did. Uh, we also had, like, uh, it was already mentioned, I think, in the, in the report and in the presentation that we, we had a speci specific uh, uh, specific uh, cultures uh, and due to some specific situations you know the quality was poor and we had to do the write-offs but what all we also did we did the you know like, let's say partially inventorization of the forage crops we are having in the farms and then generally we uh, wrote uh, off part of that so that's where the increase is coming thank you um, another question that we received is as following. Um, how is the development of biogas stations going and when do you expect it to begin? Thank you. Okay, great. So, uh, biomethane stations, uh, we are planned uh, for third quarter uh, of uh, next year and uh, probably third and quarter, fourth quarter will be implementation of these facilities. And the, like I said before, also the third quarter, we also have a aim uh, to start with uh, first our machinery, which will be run uh, on our farms uh, from in this new processed uh, by meat and stations uh, gas. So we just want to, to keep everything on time uh, for, for fifth quarter next year. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And is there any interest from conventional farmers who plan to switch to organic farmer farming, possibly approaching you for a buyout? Thank you. Um, actually, one want to say that our company at the moment we in, is not looking to uh, for uh, to, for growing expansion uh, like uh, to to increase our business model like uh, currently business models we do now. So we don't we don't buy farms. We don't expand our portfolio by buying out. But um, but you know what? Uh, it's important to mention that. Uh, uh, that's interesting in farming in general. Organic farm is is probably uh, pushed uh, by um, institutionals like uh, governments and so on. We have uh, targets uh, for to increase uh, in Europe uh, organic farming three times, and uh, we actually just uh, just uh, providing new how to say strategies. Every country need to prepare new strategies for how we want uh, to reach these goals, and uh, the new strategy will be 23 to 27. And in this new strategy, probably will be resources and fundings, and the farmers are waiting for this clarification. What will be will be funding motivation for the farmers to switch from conventional to organic? And probably this information will come later, later first quarter, first half of the next year. Probably we we see what will be regulation regulations here. But if if, uh, if uh, the politicians we want to expand uh, expand farming. The organic farming we need to to motivate farmers to for the switch uh, switching to this so it's good for us because we would like for future we would like to in future cooperate with farmers 
uh, bring sustainable technology to the farmers and uh, expand our business uh, uh, business uh, well, with cooperation agreements versus uh, growing uh, organically size and the same would be done before. Thank you very much. And uh, when yeah, sorry for mm -hmm. the voice quality, so sure, sure. Thank you for thank you for your comment, uh, and we will try to to. to um, I'm sorry, the the last sentences were a bit off due to the internet connection. I would say, could you please repeat that? No, I just saw the co comment from someone that uh, there are some some issues with uh, voice quality because we are obviously moving from from the microphone. So. Sorry for that. We will try to do it better. So let's let's continue with the question. And thank you for this comment. Okay. Um, thank you. So uh, we have uh, two more questions remaining, and uh, uh, the the next one would be as following: When other new AG tech solutions will be announced publicly? Will it be in 2023? We started with our R&D's department's work on the sustainable technologies actually three years before. And the results that you see now, which is all the tractor machinery and all this uh, technology developments in, uh, in this uh, biometan cycle, we are, it will start uh, only half a year before it will be ready after three years. So uh, what I see, we can, uh, we can, so we can publish at least one uh, big achievement in technology every year uh, looking two three years in future so is and this is not only 2023 probably next year we'll publish uh, successful implementation the results coming from our r and uh, uh, deliver, de deliverables and uh, this is uh, i think that uh, we'll actually we by being the largest uh, how to see production guys in Europe uh, related with healthy food, healthy way to produce for humans uh, healthy uh, healthy food. So we are professionals and understand how the food must be produced and what tools needed uh, to produce this tool and what is missing. And uh, this is why, if not Auga will uh, will uh, will uh, how to say invest in these technological solutions. Uh, so uh, no one uh, no one farming company can do it because. Uh, uh, only the largest company can uh, can bring resources uh, for 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 and developing for for guys who uh, sitting every day in the in the, in the front of computer and be building future uh, for our company. So, but uh, we there are not any. We are only in the uh, only we are sitting now in the opex uh, and the operational costs and no, nothing in the, in the, in the, in sales in the, not in sales yes and sales and a profit line. It's only the cost part. part. Thank you very much. Um, and the last question, it seems that the last question for today will be, uh, what price of Auga Group share uh, would you expect to have after five years? Thank you. <laughs> That's actually probably, if you tell the exact number, so it will be guidance and so on. So probably it's not allowed uh, uh, to, uh, to to say, it's, it's a lot of regulations is here. So I, I, I am, uh, how to say, I listening a lot of lawyers who, constantly it's controlling me to tell something but if you you know so if you find a, a new way to produce a food with no cost to nature so and the healthy food for for humans and also at the same time healthy for our planet and there will be only one company which has its solutions and they can explain to consumers by brands what is the difference is why we need to support this kind of production and we can share this technology with all the farmers in the world so we can get we can bet 10 uh, percent of market share in all the developed countries because at least 10 percent percent of consumers will not lie that we are uh, really would like to participate in the better sustainable options and buy these options so 10 percent of these only five regions only five regions the larger most developed countries is of the food segments is 240 billion euros in sales there is no, if you ask anyone, uh, what could be price for the company if we reach this goal? So I, you better bet yourself. But uh, I, I see clear vision how to get to the goal, how to make the sustainable food, how to make, uh, and this is why I say that Auga is at the moment, my opinion, is an evaluated company. This is why 
I am. Uh, I, I also invest in Auga. If I if I have resources, I do this, and that's why I invest in Auga. And uh, in, in September, I bought shares for eight hundred thousand, seven hundred thousand euros. Uh, my personal investment in the company. So uh, I believe in Auga so much, especially now when we found that our uh, future and where we must to be and what we must to create. So our value is not to. To make a small profit, larger one or two million. So our value to to create a new brand uh, for which has never existed before in 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 in, in this planet. So uh, sustainable, uh, healthy food and uh, carbon neutral food. This does not exist. So and this is a value of our company in, in the future. Thank you very much. On that high note, uh, thank you, dear management, for the presentation. As all the questions are answered on behalf of AUGA Group and NASDAQ Vilnius, thank you everyone. It was our pleasure being with you today. The recording of the presentation will be available in the NASDAQ Baltic YouTube, YouTube channel. Have a good evening, everyone, and goodbye. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Goodbye.